and I can get that information to you. So, welcome aboard and let's get started. I'm going to start with what's new at the Government and Heritage Library, which is a library portion of the State Library. They have some very popular quizzes and their latest release is a crime history quiz. I have to admit I didn't do too well on this one. Um, the very first question is about Frankie Silver and what she used to kill her husband with in 1832. All the gory details can be found on NCpedia, which is our North Carolina encyclopedia that is um, compiled and maintained by state library staff. Other upcoming additions to NCpedia will include Wildlife in North Carolina magazine historical issues, content from UNC Libraries digital collection commemorative landscapes of North Carolina, and articles about endemic and near endemic North Carolina plant species from the Natural Heritage Program at the NC Department of Natural and Environmental Resources. So that resource, NCpedia, just continues to grow. Another cool thing coming out of the GHL is a program called County of the Week. And this is in our social media, Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter, we're highlighting a different North Carolina county every week. And uh, it's more than one post, and it's interesting information about the history of the county and um, other interesting facts about counties. I know they just did Cherokee County. We started with Alamance County in December of 13, but uh, the latest county they did, I believe, was Cherokee. And having lived there, I was very interested to read that. Um, GHL, Government and Heritage Library, is also a wonderful resource for genealogists. We have a genealogy collection and genealogy staff who provide workshops. And here are some new workshops that are scheduled for this coming year. Uh, the first one coming up, I love this, Genealogy of a House, finding out about the history of your house if you were in an older house. And I also want to make sure to highlight the October 25th Family History Fair. That's a big event. A lot of people come to that and those are sponsored by the State Library and the Archives together. We have people who come and are available to help. We have professional genealogists. If you're stuck they can get, give you some advice. And we also have exhibitors who come. So that is always a fun day. So if you're into genealogy, you might want to mark that date on your calendar. Moving on to the Library for the Blind and Physically Handicapped. This is really cool. Um, the National Library for the Service, National Library Service for Blind and Physically Handicapped, and that's out of the Library of Congress, has released a new mobile device um, from BARD, and that's the Braille and Audio Reading Download. And the Mobile device is available now for Apple devices, and it's coming on Android soon. Some of our LBPH patrons have taken to the device with great enthusiasm and have already registered and are using it. The Library for the Blind serves anyone in North Carolina that has difficulty seeing the print word or holding a print book. And public libraries can help get the word out about this valuable service. So if you know of a patron who's aging out of your print collection or has read everything in your large print collection, you can refer them to the Library for the Blind and Physically Handicapped. There's the URL. They do a fabulous job. I call that a Cadillac service is the way I always talk about that. I'm going to move on now to library development and some of the things that are happening in the State Library's library development section. Probably the big one that everybody's wanting to know about right now is our Library Services and Technology Act grant period. Right now we know that we're in the calm before the storm. Those grant applications are all due on February 28th and they will be flooding in at that time. We expect a flurry of activity then 
uh, just two weeks away. And um, there's a lot of activity now. Most of the questions that Ray Oldham is getting about our grants are about the two new categories, the easy innovation and the easy digitization categories. Many libraries have sent draft applications to Ray and other consultants for review, and this is the service we offer. Of course, you can't send them at the last minute because they'll be slammed. But if you would like to get some feedback on your proposal, you can do that, send it to one of the consultants here at the State Library, and they can help you strengthen your proposal. Uh, more information can be gotten from Ray Oldham, our consultant on, for federal programs, and you see her email address and phone number right there. We also have a lot of LSTA information online at the, uh, that URL. So as exciting as that project is, there's also excitement around the NC Cardinal project. This is our shared catalog ILS for public libraries in North Carolina. The most recent libraries to join are Albemarle Regional, Cumberland, and Forsyth County. I think Forsyth County came on just last week, in fact. Um, the application period for next year is open until February 28th, so that's for libraries who are interested in joining the consortium. They can apply to be considered for coming in next year. We're kind of excited about the new staff-focused LibGuide or web page called The Nest. It's designed specifically for NC Cardinal members, and it allows them, let me show you what it looks like, it allows them to get information and to share information. So if you see the tabs, the Nest, and we're announcing some upcoming training events right there. Um, we've got manuals, task forces, as you go across the top there, news, locations, calendar, downloads, and forum is a place where you can share information with each other. Tanya Prokrim, the Cardinal Manager, says that she thinks the most important points about this NEST site is that it offers another opportunity for communication. We're, she has just recently sent out uh, the first ever NC Cardinal survey. It's only 12 questions long, but we've already received 140 responses. And the goal of this survey is to find out your ideas about improving the Cardinal Project, and I think we're getting some good ideas already. We will hope that we can spark some conversation about those ideas in the forum section of the NEST site uh, once all the uh, surveys are received. The deadline for that is uh, Sunday, February 16th, so that's coming up this weekend, coming up pretty soon. I wanted to share this cool picture of a bulletin board from Forsyth County Public Library. Um, they're really getting the word out about their NC Cardinal implementation and the little stuffed cardinal over there on top of the basket just cracks me up. Here are some stats about Cardinal. You can see that um, we've been, uh, it's growing every day. Uh, total circulation to date, that's from beginning of the project in June of 2011. It's over 10 million certs. The transits, that's materials shared between libraries. Um, that continues to grow. As more libraries uh, come online, that's more people asking to share things and more items in collections to be shared. So that's a cool project, and it's continuing to grow. I'm moving on now to our data. Our data dashboards have been updated with the 2012-13 statistical data. These things are really cool. And let me jump ahead and show you what they look like. So here's the website for which that, uh, that, that URL will take you to. And I want to point out that there are three tabs about middle of the page data about my library, data about my service area, and data sources. And the reason I'm pointing that out is because these can be useful not only to you in making a case about your public library, but even it could, they could be of value, the data could be of value to your county manager 
or your the powers that be in your service area. So data about my library allows you to select your library from the drop-down box and select a comparison group. And that can be, if you're a regional library, it could be all the other regional libraries, or you can select the libraries in your economic tier, tier one, tier two, or tier three. And compare yourself so you can see how your population relates and whether you're above or below the average for your group. And this is true also for all kinds of measures of library usage, hours, and other things as well. All the stuff that you report is, we're giving it back to you here. The data about my service area allows you to compare your service area to other service areas. So this, is, this will allow you to know if you have more or fewer people in various categories, like what is the high school graduation rate? What's the poverty rate? household income, graduation rate. This data can be useful for planning and for making your case to funders. Why are you putting your resources where you're putting them? Well, because you've planned to do that. And then the data sources tab, the third tab over on the right, shows where all of the data comes from for every measure. Again, that's a great communication tool to use with your funders. And they may actually find the data sources tab to be very interesting um, for their own use. So I encourage you to play around with the data dashboards. We're getting ready to swing into the season for advocacy with legislative days both in the state and in Washington, DC. And if you plan to be active, this is a great way to get some um, data specific to your library that you can use to make a case to your funders. I'm going to move on now to the EDGE project. I hope you, some of you have heard about the EDGE project. North Carolina was indeed lucky to be named as a pilot state for this project. And what it is, it's an initiative that was founded by a national coalition of library agencies, all different kinds. Uh, American Library Association, Public Library Association, Web Junction. Uh, and so forth. And it was funded by the Gates Foundation. And what it does is it helps libraries assess how they're doing with technology and to determine where they need to improve. And then it actually gives them to tools to help them improve. We did a pilot project, I'm going to jump ahead here, with 19 public libraries in the fall of 2013 may say a soft launch, but we call it a pilot in the state in that these were the uh, guinea pigs who tried it first and then gave us some feedback. And you can see that the feedback is um, has been positive. I mean, it's not all sweetness and light, but there have been some good things about this project. The really good thing, going back again, let me back up, is that we're now involved in the national launch. And this national launch, this is going to make this process available to all the other public libraries in the state this winter. Right there, you can see January through February. We're one of the few states in the country where all the public libraries are eligible. And we're one of the few states where it's going to be free. So at this point, public libraries can participate in this project at no cost. Next year, it's going to cost. I have a selfish motive for encouraging 100% participation. And that's because not only does each individual public library get data for themselves, we're going to get some really powerful statewide data. Or there's a possibility of getting very powerful statewide data if enough libraries sign up that we can have um, a good representation in North Carolina. So if you have not registered, I encourage you to do so. And we have a special guest today, which is Sharon Woodrow, the director of the Haywood County Public Library, who was involved in our soft launch or pilot project last fall. And I've asked Sharon if she could speak with us for a few minutes about her experiences with the EDGE project. So 
you can uh, hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. So at this point, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Sharon Woodrow. Sharon? You need to unmute your mic. Good morning. Can you hear me now? Yes, good. Um, unfortunately, I had to come back home where ha we have terrible weather and my internet connection is not as good here as it is at work. So um, I want to thank Cal for asking me to speak a little bit, but the EDGE assessment has really turned out to be a wonderful thing for our library system because uh, when I first became the director, uh, in a matter of months, um, the first survey came out. And as a new director, uh, I thought it would be important for me to, um, to take this survey. And it did involve uh, some time and it needed we needed assistance in getting it done because you had to go and check all of your computers and uh, check for internet speed and answer a lot of different questions. But what I found from taking the time to do this survey in that very first year, and this was before the, the actual launch with the other libraries, um, I found that um, our internet speed was not nearly good enough um, and that overall our system really um, lacked a lot of the initiatives that EDGE was uh, really pushing. So um, in that first year I was able to increase our internet speed and start working on some of the EDGE benchmarks. Um, the edge benchmarks, they have broke down into three areas, uh, community value, engaging the community, and organizational management. So I was looking at all of those areas and seeing what we could do for very little money. And I found out that we really could start working on some things without having funds at that time. And, and we were able to do some of those things. Then uh, the state library started the EDGE initiatives and uh, invited us to be one of the pilot libraries. And at that point, uh, taking it even more seriously, uh, I redid the uh, survey and found that we had uh, surprisingly come up in points because they have a little point system that really is for your own use. This is really, you're not being graded as in, uh, you know, you're doing really poorly or you're doing really well. You're being graded in the respect of this is telling you where you are and how you can improve. So that's exactly the way I took it is I want to look at this assessment and see what I can do to improve our services here in Haywood County. So at that point, I was able to see the steps we had taken, how we had improved, and just start building upon that even more. And there again, it took a little time, but uh, over a period of time, we uh, added one-on-one uh, -on -one instructions with computers and devices. Uh, we started checking out Kindles and Nooks. Uh, one of the benchmarks was engaging the community, and uh, this was where we lacked. So we started divide, uh, devoting more time to outside agencies and, and forming partnerships with like Head Start and Southwestern Daycares. And um, if we're lucky enough to get a grant that we've been working on this year, uh, we're going to start a digital story time. So there again, we were building upon this information that came from, from the assessment and the survey. And in organizational management, another one of the benchmarks, uh, we found that using the LibGuides that was offered by the State Library that we were able to uh, give a much more informative website, create a more visual presence in the community. Uh, we started a Facebook page and Pinterest and uh, just built 
all of these new areas within our system that really the initiative came from the edge assessment. Actually, the first assessment and then the second assessment I did. It all helped us form these ideas of where to go with our library system to help build within the community. And I truly encourage all of you to do the same thing. It's a, a, it's a, a big step to take, but it was so worth it. Uh, the time that we put into it was minimal compared to everything that you will get back out of it and, and what you'll be able to use to work with your community and make your library system better. So I hope that this helps all of you. I'd be happy to answer any questions that I can or be of service in any way. And I hope that this is what Cal had in mind when she wanted me to talk about what we were doing. But it was really exciting to me to be able to move forward and, and get so many things done. And I really found that a lot of it did not cost a lot of money. So that was, that was the really good thing about it. It was just really working toward those benchmarks. So I'll turn it back over to you, Cal. Thanks, Sharon. That was perfect. Um, I sort of feel that we don't have uh, enough bandwidth in North Carolina, and I, I would venture to say you probably agree with me. And I think the first step to increasing it is getting a really good feeling for what bandwidth we do have. Not what we're told that we have, but what we actually have. Um, and so I, one of my favorite comments from the pilot project libraries was, I finally know how much bandwidth I actually have. So this is one way to determine that. And one other uh, piece of feedback that we received that I thought was interesting was that um, the library director said, just filling out the assessment was a great communication tool in her library because people were saying, well, gee, I didn't know we did that. or uh, you know, library staff were learning about um, what was going on in other parts of the library. So that was kind of interesting. Um, and I have to say, Sharon, you have been my very first guest on one of these webinars. I think it worked out so wonderfully. I'll be having guests in the future. If anybody would like to volunteer or you have a suggestion for a guest, please note it in the chat box. And as always, if you have a question at any point during the webinar, please ask it. We want to be casual and have a good time today. All right, so moving on from EDGE, we've got some Center for the Book news. The Letters About Literature contest is going on right now. We have received uh, almost 2,000 letters. This is a contest for students and they write about an author who's had an impact on them. You can find out more about it at the website. Uh, we are ongoing Let's Talk About It programs. We've got 15 libraries who are doing a Spring 14 programs, and two of them are doing the new series, Muslim Journeys. Uh, if you want to know more about any of these programs, you can talk to Molly Westmoreland. We've got a ton of CE news, so here I'm just going to start getting started. Um, we've got both face-to-face -face and distance ed workshops. We're going to start with the distance ed classes, and these are um, offered by Universal Class. This is a service that the State Library pays for and makes available to all kinds of libraries around the state, um, academic, community college, public. Uh, they have about 150 self-paced courses covering technology, communication, interpersonal skills, management, and more. Oh, there it is on the slide. And um, if you are interested, you can contract, contact Jeffrey Hamilton, and he will get you signed up for these courses. Uh, I asked Jeffrey, what are people taking? And he said, well, here you go. These are the top 10 classes that have been um, taken by library staff in the state so far. Um, I guess this was last year. So you can see some of the titles. Um, and we'd love to, for you to try them and uh, let us know what you think. 
Uh, we did move from Web Junction to Universal Class, so we're very much interested in evaluate, evaluating this, getting uh, feedback from anyone who uses one of these classes. How did you like it? Did it meet your needs? Or do we need to keep looking around for another provider? Now, we also have a bunch of face-to-face -face classes. So we're going to whip through these. These are all available on the train station. So if you don't remember anything about the next five or six slides, remember the train station, because everything I'm getting ready to tell you is going to be available on the train station if it's not there already. The train station is where all of the continuing ed opportunities are listed, including you know, webinars, face-to-face -face classes, and other things. Uh, so we've got two half-day workshops on LibCal and LibGuides. That's coming up right away. So want to get that out there if you're interested and are close to Sanford. You might think about taking one of those two classes. Wednesday webinars are offered by Joyce Chapman, and she is our consultant for data analysis. She's the person who put together the data um, website that I was showing you earlier. She does regular web webinars on data topics, and here are the ones that are coming up. We did a LibPass reports webinar last month, and so this is this chat section session that's coming up. Well, that's today, this afternoon, uh, if the weather allows. This will be to chat about um, what the topics were covered last time. So uh, you can ask Joyce questions about creating and using LibPass reports. And registration's open until 30 minutes prior to the webinar start. So it's not too late for you to register for that um, at the train station. Then we have Surveys 101. Part 1 is Methodology and Good Question. And that's how do you develop a survey and how to write a good question. And then Part 2 will concentrate on using common survey tools like SurveyMonkey and Google tools to create tools and analyze the data that you get from your survey. Oh, thanks, Kelly. OK, so we're going to be rescheduling. Yeah, we're just waiting for this snow to start here in Raleigh. Um, so thanks for bringing me up to date on that. Moving on to some more face-to-face -face workshops. We're doing NC Live Advanced Workshops. In these locations, you can ramp up your search skills and learn insider tips and tricks at these NC Live Advanced Workshops. We have some new workshops that are coming up, and they are on NC Live Health. Um, and here are the locations for those health-specific workshops. This is using NC Live resources to answer health-related questions. We also have NC Live Business. This is an all-new full-day workshop, and this is obviously focusing on the resources available through the business management portal. Another new workshop, I, I, Kelly, I'm surprised she has time to sit in here today because she is our CE consultant who's doing all of these workshops, so I applaud her for all of these great new workshops coming up, including NC Live Kids. This is new half-day workshops, especially for those who work with children and teens. You might not think that there are workshop, I mean, there's NC Live content suitable for kids and teens, but there is. And you can learn more about it by attending one of these workshops. Again, all of these are on the train station, you guys, so don't forget. And we have uh, this workshop in partnership, and I love that, with NCLA's Technology and Trends Roundtable. And this is uh, a series of half-day workshops featuring Jason Griffey. And Jason Griffey is an internationally known technologist, writer, blogger, head of library IT at the University of Tennessee Chattanooga, and Library Box Kickstarter. And Library Box is an open source portable digital file distribution tool based on inexpensive hardware that enables delivery of educational, healthcare, and other vital information 
to individuals off the grid. So if you um, Google Jason Griffey, you can find out more about that. His half-day workshops are going to be low barrier technologies in the morning. That's going to be talking about mobile and portable technology in your library. And then in the afternoon, he's going to be talking about trends and issues in technology. I can't imagine a better person than Jason Griffey to talk about trends. So I think you will definitely enjoy those classes if you can attend one. Ah, thanks, Kelly. There's Jason's URL. And if you add library box to the back of that URL, you'll get right specifically to the library box portion of this website. Um, OK, I'm moving on. I see Kelly's typing, and we'll see that in a minute. But we've got some other big news coming up that I want to, oh, here we go. Ah, oh, OK. That's pretty cool. A library box scavenger hunt at PLA, if anybody's going to that conference. I hear great things about it. I'm, I'm envious of anybody who's going. I think it's going to be a really good event. OK, I'm moving on now to, with some news about NC Live. And this is important because NC Live operates on a three-year resource cycle, and we're at a we're at a critical part of that resource, those three, that three-year cycle, and I want to make you aware of that. So every three years, they review content, and they decide what to drop and what to subscribe for for the following year. So NC Live works on a calendar year, and we have from now through the end of this year to make these decisions so that the next three years, beginning January 1, of 2015, for the next three years, uh, the decisions of what's going to be on NC Live are being made now. So this is what Tim Rogers is expecting. He's not expecting any new funding, and I would agree with him on that. So uh, I, he's saying cuts in access are likely just because um, costs are going up for the resources we're, being, we're using. The resource selection decisions are made by the RAC, and that's in that next bullet. And the RAC is the Resource Advisory Committee. And if you go to that URL, you can see who's in that committee. Uh, we have representatives for every community of interest. So the academics have a representative, as do the public libraries, the community colleges, and the private academic libraries. These people want your input. They want to know what you're using, what you're not using and what you would like to see uh, in NC Live. NC Live staff are soliciting proposals from vendors now in these areas that you can see, support education, enhancing economic development, and improving quality of life. These are not in uh, order of importance. And let me share the process, what's going to be happening. So NC Live will be conducting a survey of libraries to determine what a resource is worth. So we're going to say, they're going to say, how much are you willing to pay for this? And so if interests have changed over the last three years since the last time we did this, we want to, they want to reveal which resources perhaps are of lower value to the users. The RAC, the Resource Advisory Committee, is being it's going to be making decisions in May and June. So you want to get to them before May or June if you have strong opinions about this. And I would encourage you to go look online, see who your representative is, and call them up and give them your feedback. They really want it. I can assure you of that. The RAC recommendations will go to the Librarians Council. That's the governing body at NC Live in June and July. That's where the tough decisions are made about what can be, we get forward and what are we going to have to drop. And then the new contracts would begin January 1, 2015. Whatever, we, whatever resources we have on January 1, 2015 are going to be the resources we have for the following three years. So. I hope that you all will um, share your feedback with your RAC representatives and so that we can get uh, really broad input into this process. 
There are complete collection development guidelines available on the NC Live web website. I was perusing that just the other day, and it was pretty interesting reading. So I encourage you to check that out if you are interested to see how they operate and make these decisions. Now, some hot news coming out of NC Live just this morning, which was um, uh, exciting, is their homegrown ebook project. And I know that they have been working on this for a while. A pro an email about this ebook project was sent to library directors just this morning. And uh, this information will also be posted to the NC Live blog by about noon today. And that means it will also be available on the NC Live website later today. What this is is a pilot project to provide ebooks to libraries, NC Live libraries, and that's those four communities of interest that I mentioned just a minute ago. The cool thing about this, I think, is that these are unlimited checkouts, so that's unlike um, existing ebook consortia. These are all North Carolina publishers that we're going for, um, and we're going to, this is going to be uh, as I said, unlimited. So unli that means 50 different people can have the same book checked out at the same time, which is just unheard of. I'm, I'm interested to see how this goes. Uh, we're going to test, NC Live is going to test this out. They have some ebooks in the project already, and they're asking libraries to pony up some money. $250 for the pilot means you can get each book title for about 25 cents. There are lots of different titles. In the email, there's a link that will let you go and look at the list of titles so you can see what they're talking about. It includes fiction and nonfiction. I saw a couple, I just looked at the first couple of pages uh, this morning and I saw some books I'm already interested in checking out. So. I encourage you to check that out. The value of this project is it's going to provide all libraries with access to content. So we do have some libraries in the state that don't currently offer ebooks beyond what NC Live already offers. So this is good content. Many award-winning books are going to be available, but they're from the small publishers. They're not the you know the big five. Um, so many of these publishers make their content available on one vendor platform, or not at all. So if a library has OverDrive, but this publisher only works with eBrary, then that library with OverDrive is out of luck. This is going to bring all the NC publishers together, and we will all have access to the content. So I think that's kind of an interesting concept. It's going to test providing unlimited access to this higher interest content. Nobody knows what's going to happen when we do this. We don't know, and the publishers don't know. It's just a test. We're just going to check it out and see how it works. And then the thing that's most exciting to me is that we're getting, this is going to give us an ebook platform that we can all use. And perhaps in the future, we can free ourselves from some of the proprietary platforms that are being imposed on us now by certain vendors. I will name no names. So um, check out the information when it comes out uh, later today. And uh, I hope that enough libraries will support this that we can get a pretty good collection. We want to get about 1,000 titles to start with, or NC Live does, and so that we'll have, again, enough data to really make some decisions about going forward and is this working and is it something we want to pursue. Uh, coming to end to the home stretch, so if anybody has any questions, now is a good time to post them. Um, in January, we did a quickie. I called it the Ed Koch survey. If you remember Ed Koch, the mayor of New York, he was the one who was famous for going around on the streets of New York saying, how am I doing? How am I doing? So I thought we would do a really quickie nine-question survey. How are we doing? How's the State Library doing? Totally unscientific, totally just almost for fun. Uh, we threw the survey up and we got responses from 48 people, uh, 
mostly public libraries. We had a little bit of community college response. We put it up on the LD blog and sent it out on a couple of lists. So we weren't really diligent about getting the word out. But um, So uh, what we asked questions about was which services that the state library provides are most valued, and then how do the services we provide meet your needs. So the services most valued were the top three, continuing education, LSTA grants, and youth services. So that is what they most value. When we said, so which of these most meet your needs? Surprise, surprise, it was the same three, continuing education, LSTA grants, and youth services. And you can see from the uh, great number of continuing education slides that we shared with you today that there is a lot going on in continuing education. And we just completed the survey. We do an annual survey, but we're always interested in your feedback about continuing education needs. So please let us know. I was also personally interested in communication because we've been uh, actively trying to increase and improve the amount of communication that the State Library has with libraries around the state. And we pretty much heard that People said, you're doing just fine. They you mostly get their communication via email, listservs, and phone calls. Uh, this webinar is not a really highly rated way that people get communication, but they're fun, and I enjoy doing them, and people enjoy coming, so we'll continue to do these as well. If you have any feedback to share about the State Library at any time, please share it with anyone on staff. We would love to know what you think, and if you have requests, let us know. Sharon Woodrow is t uh, chatting, and she's reminding me that she sent some great slides uh, about the EDGE project that she is going to, she's provided them to Jeffrey and me, and she's saying that it's okay for us to share them with you. So we will do that. Um, and that's really good information about that project. I was afraid we'd run out of time today, but look, we have plenty of time. Um, so this webinar is going to be posted to the State Library website. Uh, we, every webinar, every two months when we do a webinar, we post it, and every month we post our monthly report, and that should be going up this afternoon as well. So I encourage you to Go to our website if you ever need information about what's new and what's going on right now, and you can find these slides there. That's it from me. Do we have any questions or comments from anyone out there about anything we've covered today? OK, I don't see anyone typing. I want to, oh, Jenny is. I know Dave Trudeau. Thank you, Jenny. Um, Dave Trudeau is our Intellectual Freedom Chair for the NCLA, North Carolina Library Association, and he's staying on top of all these challenges that are happening in the, happening in the state, including one right now up in Watauga County that's hanging fire. So thank you, Dave, for all your work on that. And I just wanted to say, thank Harriet Smith for coming. She's the chair of the State Library Commission and volunteers her services to us um, all the time. OK. Well, thanks for coming, y'all. Oh, we got more typing. Good. Thank you, Jane. I guess you're getting some weather where you are. Thanks, Sharon. Yeah, and there's thanks, Dave. There's a lot happening. Um, I noticed that that um, hearing just the other night in Watauga, they're just kicking the can down the road, it seems, and putting off any final decision about the Isabella Lende book, uh, House of Spirits. So I hope, uh, I hope that gets resolved soon. Oh, great, Angela. I'm glad that the, a crowd huddled around, and I hope everybody stays safe and warm during this weather that we're expecting. Um, the next webinar will be in two months.
in April. So keep an eye on the train station and uh, you'll see that announcement. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.